a safe and healthy workplace for everyone. This is Singapore's vision. To achieve this, our Prime Minister has set a national target. We should aim not only for as good a safety record as the developed countries, but to have one of the best workplace safety records in the world. And we can do it. Among the several initiatives to improve safety standards is a set of guidelines on design for safety of buildings and structures. In all construction projects, design and planning is critical to reduce risks at source and improve site safety. The new guidelines aim to better manage safety right from the start of any construction project. It recognizes that effective design and planning must be supported by a proper chain of communication to ensure accurate transmission of information. In this process, all stakeholders assume important roles. This includes the client, designer, contractor and the design for safety coordinator. Clients play a crucial role in setting the right tone for safety and health at the start of each project. A client who regards safety and health as a priority encourages others along the construction value chain to do the same. By allocating ample time and resources to each project, clients will be able to ensure that construction works are carried out safely. As a developer, we have to deal with a very long supply chain to consultants, to contractors and many layers of subcontractors. Design decisions impact the construction phase as well as the activities downstream such as maintenance, repair and demolition. As such, designers play a crucial role in eliminating hazards and reducing risks right at the conceptual stage. A good designer has to think about safe ways of constructing the building right from the very beginning. It cannot be an afterthought, it cannot be downstream and then trying to force a contractor to implement safe procedures to do the impossible. Safe design doesn't necessarily mean a plain and boring design. One can actually think out of the box. Okay. As long as one is very conscious at the design stage, how is it going to be constructed? Can it be done safely? And at the end of the day, very importantly, can it be maintained as part of an overall program? Following the design stage, both main and subcontractors must be able to manage the risks that are not being eliminated or mitigated. They must implement the right control measures. The key to a successful building is that we all talk up front. And we talk about you know, how we're going to plan it, you know, how, how we're going to do it safely. Safety is a big part of how we build. It's a big part of how we plan it. Communication is a big challenge and make sure that all parties, being the designers, being the clients, being the subcontractors, are all thinking about the same thing and thinking about safety. To implement design for safety effectively, the client must appoint a qualified design for safety coordinator to manage safety and health risks. The coordinator must ensure proper communication of vital information amongst all stakeholders. The role of the coordinator is to facilitate the design review process uh, together with the relevant stakeholders to study and understand the risk and look at possible ways to eliminate risk at source. We will facilitate the guide process which consists of three reviews. Firstly, concept design review. Secondly, detailed design maintenance and repair review, and lastly, pre-construction review. The guidelines will help stakeholders to apply the concept of design for safety. It also serves as a resource of vital information on safety and health. With specified duties in place, the framework entails the involvement of every stakeholder in the construction value chain. This facilitates a seamless process, a safe building or structure, and ultimately, safe workplaces.